In today's video, we'll be looking at a business empire so vast that even after a hundred years of technological progress, no man has managed to overtake its founder. This is the history of Standard Oil. Before we get started on the story, if you're like us at Business Explored, not only will you enjoy learning about great businesses, you'll enjoy investing in them too. Check out the link in the description to get a free trial to our favorite stock research tool. Enjoy! Now back to the video. Standard Oil started in 1839 with the birth of John Rockefeller in upstate New York. He was the eldest son of a traveling merchant. John's father would spend weeks away from home. In order to help his mother, John would make money any way he could, such as raising turkeys or doing work for neighbors. John was a natural hustler and dropped out of school at a young age to work as a bookkeeper at a local produce broker, earning as little as 50 cents per day. John stayed for two years, but when he didn't get the raise he deserved, he decided to go his own way and set up his own brokerage. Thanks to his good reputation, he received a huge loan at the time of $4,000. John used the money to start trading hay, grain, and various meats, and in his first year, he recorded sales of half a million dollars. In 1859, something happened to John that would change his life forever. Just a hundred miles east of Cleveland, the first American oil well had been discovered. This marked the beginning of the Pennsylvania oil rush, and within a year, 4,500 barrels of oil would be produced. John saw a huge opportunity. However, he witnessed many people go bust trying to strike oil, so he knew that business was too risky for him. Instead, he decided to let others go through the hassle of finding the oil and he would just buy it off of them. John was patient in his plans and waited until 1863 for the government to build a rail line connecting the Pennsylvania oil fields to Cleveland. At this point, John was ready with a long line of partners and banks ready to back him up. He also assembled a team of seasoned chemists and engineers, who not only optimized the refining process, but also discovered various uses for the byproducts of refining petroleum, such as paraffin wax, tar, and naphtha. Within two years, the Rockefeller refinery was worth over $70,000 and was among the largest in Cleveland. However, John wasn't done. In 1865, there were 26 competing refineries, but within five years, John had acquired all but four of them. John's business was getting too big to handle as a partnership, so in 1870, he incorporated a Standard Oil of Ohio. John didn't stop here. He also wanted to acquire the few remaining competitors in Cleveland. To do so, John would simply invite them over and show them his books, revealing that he could operate at a loss far longer than they could stay solvent. In exchange for a good buyout price, John would offer his competitors positions in his own company, thus placing the brightest minds in the industry under his control. Of course, not everyone would give up immediately, and over time, John eroded the price of oil and kerosene, sometimes by as much as 80% to strangle competitors. Unsurprisingly, his strategy worked. By 1880, he'd acquired all refineries across the northeastern U.S and was refining over 90% of the entire country's oil production. John's power grew to the point where he would personally negotiate rebates with the owners of the big rail companies for using their trains. In 1882, John reincorporated in New Jersey, this time creating the Standard Oil Trust, which in turn held stakes in over 40 local companies. Then, to showcase his success, John built an impressive headquarters for his company on Broadway. This moment was a high point of Rockefeller's Standard Oil. He owned 20,000 oil wells, 40,000 miles of pipeline, and employed over 100,000 people. However, his grip on the oil industry was loosening. Massive oil deposits had been discovered in Russia and Asia, and were being developed by the Rothschild family which spared no effort in getting that oil to America. Worse yet, in 1890, the federal government passed the Sherman Antitrust Act, which finally gave politicians the teeth to go after the Standard Oil Trust itself. Of course, the complex legal structure behind all the companies was very difficult to investigate, which is why the government couldn't break up Standard Oil until 1911. 
By that point, however, John Rockefeller had already cashed out and was no longer actively managing the company. In the final 20 years of his company's existence, it had paid out over half a billion dollars in dividends. By some estimates, the true worth of Standard Oil at its peak was $1 trillion. In 1911, the Supreme Court found Standard Oil guilty of anti-competitive practices and broke the company up into 34 separate entities. Of course, John Rockefeller kept his stake in those companies until his death, and in fact, it turns out that the breakup was the most profitable event in his life. You see, over time, many of those companies merged back with one another. Today, most of these standard remnants are part of ExxonMobil, Chevron, or BP, which have since become incredibly large companies in their own right. John Rockefeller's ownership of these successor companies made him the richest businessman to have ever lived, with an estimated net worth of $400 billion. Even today, no one has beaten Rockefeller in the leaderboard, and there is an argument that no one ever will. So, that is the history of Standard Oil. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to Business Explored and watch other videos in our playlist. Thanks for watching.